thank you for coming to the museum today. When was the last time you were here, sir? It's been many, many years ago. I think it was uh, 1975. But uh, so much has changed. Uh, you have everything here now. You, it's always been a great museum, but uh, it's even better today than it was in 1975. Um, maybe is even a uh, little less than 75, about 72 or three when I was here. But uh, Yeah, we have 19 acres now and four hangars. It, it, it has really grown since the time I was here last. Yeah. 350 airplanes, it's amazing. It, it is, you have them all, it seems. So you've uh, flown many that are here represented Yeah, here. I have, yeah. Uh, talk about some of your favorites that you got to fly over the years. Well, uh, there, there are many uh, planes. I, I kind of like to fly different airplanes. Um, and uh, over the course of time, I flew quite a, quite a few. Uh, one of the first airplanes that I flew a lot was the P-38 um, that you have here. And uh, I particularly liked that airplane and I, I have quite a few hours in, in, that, in that plane. And you have a really nice model of it here and I really enjoyed uh, seeing it again. And, uh, it's in great condition. So. Uh, World War II was, uh, well, it was a, a, a great war in that we had a, a strong incentive uh, after the Japanese uh, bombed Pearl Harbor. Uh, I, I think the whole country was really unified at that time. Uh, and uh, so uh, everything went well. But what was it like to fly the U-2, and especially during that time of the Cuban Missile Crisis? Yeah, well, it was very different uh, airplane uh, in that uh, it uh, didn't want to land. <laughs> it, really, it, it was like a glider. So, uh, And uh, when, when I uh, got the squadron, uh, uh, I guess in 1960, and uh, uh, Gary Powers had just been shot down. Um, over the Soviet Union, and uh, so uh, uh, so at that time, uh, shortly after that, then I got this uh, the squadron that uh, had been uh, operated in uh, uh, Europe and also in uh, in Asia, and uh, uh, after he was shot down, I didn't think the U-2 had any future. Uh, but uh, any, anyhow, we started uh, flying it, and uh, within six months, uh, we were uh, overflying Cuba. And uh, uh, so we did, uh, had uh, uh, regular trips over Cuba at that time. And uh, I didn't think it would be much happening there, but pretty soon, there were a lot of Soviet people that appeared, and uh, so in uh, 62, and then that began the Cuban Missile Crisis uh, uh, in, in uh, those years, so. And uh, your squadron took some of the photos that JFK saw, right? Yes, yes. What was that like? And you got a commendation letter from JFK, I yeah, Yes, what, I did. What was some of that interaction? Well, that was, uh, that was the ultimate reward, you know, for, for the president to uh, take notice of that, and, uh, and um, in a sense, it may have avoided a war because the um, Soviets were heavily, uh, 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 they, they had a lot of people and a lot of equipment in Cuba at that time. And they had the missiles there. And uh, uh, I think uh, the staff, Kennedy's staff was about, uh, 50% divided, about halfway divided, of those that wanted to knock out the missiles immediately next day, or, or those that wanted to see if we couldn't settle it uh, peaceably. And uh, fortunately, though, uh, uh, that group won. And uh, there was a week there that I thought we might be going to war every day. But uh, fortunately, uh, uh, it was, it was settled, and uh, 
by uh, the Soviets agreeing to move their missiles and all equipment out, out of, uh, uh, out of yeah. Cuba. Uh, when I was in college, um, the government finally uh, decided to uh, start a little uh, 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 program with two uh, instructors and two small airplanes. <laughs> and I, I uh, signed up for that and I got started with that. Uh, as a, a young kid, and I really liked it so much that I uh, stayed with it, and then I uh, got in, in, in the aviation cadet program, and uh, and then I uh, got commissioned and flew a lot of airplanes. But it's been a, a great career for me. Of course, flying is taking a, a a little different step now that we uh, have drones that uh, you can uh, fly the drones all, everywhere <laughs> and not even be in one of them. So that's, that's a change in flying for sure. What was the, the drone program that you worked on? It, it, it was a very early uh, drones. They, they had a, they were X models, you might say. They hadn't really uh, uh, put a name to one and uh, like uh, airplanes, we had a lot of problems with them early on. But uh, today, you know, they they fly everywhere, and uh, so it, it's it's been very successful. But it uh, is uh, similar to going developing uh, a program uh, where you have to go through all the steps to make it uh, reliable. And that, that's uh, what, and we were at the very early stages of the drone program. The yeah, F-22 and the F-35, what would you give to fly one of those? Oh, uh, yes, I would like very much to, and they're not going to be all that many that get to fly those. So I, I would say uh, those are pretty lucky people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think about the... Um the technology that's in the F-22, the thrust vectoring? Yes. Like, you know, can you talk about the F-22? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I I don't know that much about it, except uh, it, it's a very impressive airplane. And uh, so I, I would just like to uh, know more about those two airplanes, uh, particularly the 35. It, uh, it's an awesome plane. Why do you think people should come and see what we have? Why do you think they should see aviation in American history? Uh, well, I, I think you have the greatest collection anywhere of airplanes and uh, of uh, events that occurred over the years. It, it's history, and uh, you have it all. I think I think you just have a marvelous facility here, and uh, I am, so I, I feel so benefited to be able to come back once more and see all the expansion that's been. And uh, you've expanded quite a lot since I was here many, many years ago. And uh, it's all good.